Hello. Hello, my dear students. I am Professor Charles Seni. I did my MSc from IIT Delhi and MPhil from Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar. Then I taught for more than 40 years in the postgraduate department of physics in DAV College London. I have been guiding medical as well as non-medical students for the last more than 40 years. Today we will study the concept of Coulomb's law. Now, we know that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. But what is the magnitude of the force of attraction between these charges? That formula was given by Coulomb known as the Coulomb's law. Now this law is an experimental law because as such there is no theoretical proof of this law. And this law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between any two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Mathematically we can say that if we have two charges, point charges Q1 and Q2 separated by a distance R and if F is the force of attraction or repulsion, this force will be attractive if the charges are unlike and it will be repulsive if the charges are like. But in any case, the magnitude of this force F is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is known as inverse square law in electrostatics. Now if we combine these two law, two laws, these two you can say equations, we get F proportional to Q1 Q2 divided by R square. Or you can say that F is equal to K into Q1 Q2 divided by R square. Where K is the constant of proportionality and is known as the Coulomb's constant or electrostatic force constant or simply the electrostatic constant. The value of this constant depends upon two factors. Number one, it depends upon the nature of the medium in which the two charges are placed. And secondly, it depends upon the system of, system of measurement of Q1, Q2, R, etc. Therefore, in the MKS system or SI units, the value of small k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into epsilon r, where epsilon naught is called the absolute permittivity of free space or vacuum and its value is 8.854 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 coulomb square per newton per meter square and epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the medium in which the two charges are placed. Epsilon r is defined as the ratio of the absolute permittivity of the given medium to that of the free space or you can say vacuum. Because epsilon r is the ratio of two similar quantities, therefore it has no units and is dimensionless. And the value of epsilon r depends upon the nature of the medium again. Therefore, if the two charges are placed in air, strictly speaking vacuum, then epsilon r equal to 1. And therefore, the electrostatic force between two charges in air will be given by. Now I am going to put 1 instead of here, epsilon r. So we get f of a equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 divided by r square and in any other medium its value is f equal to 1 over 4 pi this is f medium f medium is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into epsilon r into q1 q2 divided by r square therefore if i divide f medium with f air all the quantities will cancel out and we, are, we will be left with epsilon r and therefore epsilon r is also equal to f air over f medium. So this gives us the second definition of uh, the relative permittivity of the given medium. It is also called dielectric constant or specific inductive capacity of the given medium and is also denoted by capital K. So therefore 
epsilon r and capital k are the same and its value as i told you is different for different mat materials for example for air strictly speaking its value is, for vacuum its value is 1 for water its value is 80 so the value of epsilon r is quite large for water and what's the reason for this it is because of the polar nature of water molecules and the large value of epsilon r for water makes it a universal solvent now we will force in the cds system in the cds system the value of small k is 1 over epsilon r or 1 over capital k or 1 over capital k therefore in the cds system the formula for the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges becomes f a equal to 1 over epsilon f medium equal to 1 over epsilon r 1 over epsilon r into q1 q2 divided by r square and f a equal to because for a epsilon r equal to 1 and therefore it will become q1 q2 divided by r square now the units of charge the si unit of charge is coulomb c o u l o m b and symbol for this is capital c now definition of coulomb as i told you that if two charges are placed in air at a distance r from each other then the force of attraction or repulsion between them is given by f a equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 divided by r square now if q1 equal to q2 each equal to q and r equal to 1 meter then f a will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught into 1 q into q q into q divided by 1 square now the value of 1 over epsilon 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 and the if we take f a also equal to 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 then we get 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 equal to 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 into q square over 1 9 goes with 9 this goes therefore q square equal to 1 or q equal to plus minus 1 and this 1 is unit charge equal to 1 coulomb so that is how we can define coulomb therefore the definition of coulomb is that 1 coulomb is that charge which when placed in air at a distance of 1 meter because I am taking r equal to 1 meter at a distance of 1 meter from an equal and similar charge or equal and dissimilar charge repels it and is repelled by it or attracts it or is attracted by it with a force of 9 into 10 raised to power 9 Newton so that is the definition of 1 coulomb and 1 coulomb of charge is also equal to the charge carried by 6.25 6.25 into 10 raised to the power 18 electrons 18 electrons in the CDS system the unit of charge is electrostatic unit of charge ESU of charge it is also called stat coulomb or stat coulomb stat coulomb and you know in the series system f a is q1 q2 divided by r square therefore to define one ESU of charge or one stat coulomb let us take q1 equal to q2 q1 equal to q2 each equal to q r equal to 1 centimeter and f a equal to 1 dime f a equal to 1 dime because the unit of force in the cds system is dime so we get 1 equal to q into q over 1 square or you can say that q square equal to 1 or q equal to plus minus 1 and this plus minus 1 means 
one ESU of charge or one stat coulomb. Therefore, one stat coulomb is defined as that charge which when placed in air at a distance of one centimeter from an equal and similar or an equal or dissimilar charge at a distance of one centimeter repels it and is repelled by it or attracts it or is attracted by it with a force of one time and we can prove that one coulomb is 3 into 10 raised to the power 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 stat coulomb and one stat coulomb is also called Franklin Franklin after the name of the scientist Franklin it is also called Franklin another unit of charge in the CDS system is the electromagnetic unit of charge electromagnetic unit of charge it is also called absolute unit of charge absolute unit of charge and that is absolute coulomb and one absolute coulomb one absolute coulomb equal to 10 coulomb and this will be equal to 10 into 3 into 10 raised to the power 9 stat coulomb that is it will be equal to 10 into 3 into 10 raised to the power 10 stat coulomb 3 into 10 power 10 stat coulomb so remember one absolute coulomb equal to 10 coulomb or 3 into 10 raised to the power 10 stat coulomb also the unit franklin or electrostatic unit of charge is the smallest unit of charge and the largest unit of charge is faraday and one faraday equal to one faraday equal to 96500 coulomb another practical unit of charge is ampere hour ampere hour and one ampere hour equal to 3600 coulomb 3600 coulomb now the value of capital k or epsilon r which is known as i as i told you relative primitivity or dielectric constant or specific inductive capacity of the given medium its value cannot be less than one that is it, it the minimum value of k or epsilon r is one and that is for air or vacuum and its maximum value is infinite that is for metals okay we will continue okay